Wow, everyone, thanks so much. In a matter of like days, I went from having a brand new channel with nothing on it to just a crazy amount of likes, comments, subscribers, and just general support from all of you. It was way beyond anything I was ever expecting. Now, a big thank you to James the Hacksmith for allowing me to take the grappling witch home and giving me that shout out. And most of you initially, it was probably here because of him, but I was just so encouraged that so many of you would want to come across to a new channel just to see how I've done things on my own. Now, I'm really looking forward to getting back to the Grappling Winch because it's like so much fun and because I didn't get as much done last time as I actually wanted. But all this kind of got me thinking, this might be an interesting opportunity to start taking this all a little bit more seriously, particularly if I can put the effort in and make some other really cool things after I'm done with the Grappling Winch. So I thought a good first step might be to start upgrading my workshop, giving me the opportunity to make some really cool things in the future. So the first upgrade that I desperately needed to make was this, a beautiful shelving system. Now, before this, my workshop was... Now, before I made this, my workshop was in absolute shambles. It was a terrible mess. So I figured, gotta make me something like this. I could go to the store and buy my shelf, or I could make it by my shelf. Since building this, everything has become so much more ordered and nice. So it's definitely been a worthwhile upgrade. The next thing that I want to make is a welding cut. Alright, so here's what I want the welding cut to be like. I'm going to make it out of square steel galvanized tube that I was able to pick up for scrap. And I'm going to have big wheels here to support the enormous heavy argon tank I've got. And then small caster wheels at the front to allow easy maneuverability. And I'll make a welding shelf in the middle to support the welder on an angle so you can actually read what's on the front of it. And just some extra shelf on the top for extra storage. All right, let's get started. So before I get started grinding or welding, you might notice I've got a lot of protective equipment with me. Most of it's just standard stuff, but this one in particular, respirator, is gonna be very important in this case because galvanized steel releases toxic fumes when you weld it. it gives you like this thing called gal flu, last two days, really unpleasant. So hopefully I can avoid that just by using a respirator and having some good airflow through here. So here is the welding cart upside down. I've just ground this off really well to get all this ink off so that I can actually TIG weld it because I'm better at TIG than stick and because it should make a nice strong bond to hold the bottom of the cart on.
this gonna work? Aha! Not bad though. Pretty happy with that. Allow me to introduce to you the other side of my workshop. Right now, it's just a big empty space, but I want to turn it into my metal working area. For now, all I've got here is my lovely welding car that I just finished, but eventually I'd like to have a really nice metal table here too. It was supposed to be done for this video, but there's been a couple of delays. So the first one is the National Power Utility for South Africa has implemented load shedding, which means that they turn off your power for a couple of hours every day because they haven't got enough power. The second thing is, turns out gal steel sucks. I've never tried welding it before. I knew it wasn't gonna be that fun, but it really wasn't that fun. Fumes everywhere, really took a long time. Anyway, I'm gonna to have to do the table next time, but stay tuned, it's gonna be pretty awesome. So previously I was using this launcher to launch the grappling hook. Now, this was a bit weak. It couldn't launch the grappling hook like more than a few centimeters pretty much. So I really needed to improve on that. My original thought was to use a lighter hook, but in the end I figured this has some big problems with it. I'd be better off just trying to design a much more powerful launcher. So one of the main issues with this one is that actually when you fire, there's quite a lot of spots that air leaks out. And secondly, by the time that your CO... Where is the CO2 cartridge? Ah, here it is. And secondly, by the time that the CO2 cartridge had expanded into the full chamber, it was probably only operating at about 300 PSI, which is decent but you know, you can do better, especially if you're using scuba air, because that is about 3000 PSI. 10 times the power sounds pretty good to me. So I decided I'd actually create my own high pressure air launcher that can use 3000 PSI air stored in a little paintball canister like this. Now the paintball canister has a built-in regulator to take it down to 800 PSI, but I'm going to see if I can modify that and remove it entirely and get the full 3000 PSI out. Now, that's a lot of pressure. It's really a lot. You've probably seen videos of scuba tanks flying off into the distance and like smashing through walls and stuff. So one thing I need to consider is that when I make the valve, the valve needs to be able to not only stand up to that amount of pressure, but also the valve needs to be able to open against all of that pressure. I decided to use brass fittings because they're really nice and easy to tap and they're actually quite thick walled. And I'm hoping if something goes wrong, they will leak before exploding violently. So I've drawn up a plan for how I think this should work. I'm going to tap one end of this and have it connected to the paintball tank. And then the other end, I'm going to put the hammer valve that you can hit to open a poppet on the inside of this that I'm going to have to make. Yeah, so in the meantime, the first step that I'm going to have to do is just tap some holes, cut some internal valve seats and poppet bits and stuff like that. Then we'll see how it goes. All right, so that's done. It's, um, it's a little shallower than I would have liked. It's only about four threads deep. And at such high pressures, that may be a problem, but I guess we'll find out. Okay, so that's a bit of a problem. The arbor on my angle grinder has suddenly come slightly loose and that actually messed up my cut here. So I guess that's what I get for my impatience back to Hacksawing it the old way. Good riddance. Now I reckon for the poppets, plastic would be a little too weak, but copper as a choice of material makes sense. Hmm. All right, so if I put another coin on here, 
with some holes in it. It should let the air through, but it should actually do quite a nice job of centering the poppet in the end here. So, let's do that. Let's go to face some more currency. All right, let's see if that's too small. Nope, spot on actually. Well, it doesn't have to be particularly nice because nobody's going to see it. Alright, now, where is my puppet? There's a line about that, isn't there? I, I know you're here, puppet. Okay. Alright. Oh, that is quite cool indeed. Check this out. Can't move at all, you push it out, goes out nicely. No movement whatsoever. So the air can slip through that gap there and press the bottom half of the poppet into the valve seat. And then when you smack it open, the air can rush all the way around to get out. All right, let's reassemble it again then. So it's been very difficult to find these brass pieces. That's been one of the things that's holding back this project is just finding the right parts. And unfortunately, this is gonna be a problem for any project I do here in South Africa. If you're living in, let's say, Canada, you can get access to a lot of high-tech parts pretty easily online, but here they're just not really available. Especially something like this, where you need to be able to withstand such high pressures as 3000 PSI. At least I found them this time, but this is unfortunately gonna be a bit of a difficulty for me going forward. It's fine, I'll make the best of it. Okay, so now I've put the spring in to return the poppet to its home position. The only thing left to do now is thread lock everything and test it out. This here is a scuba fill station that you can get at a lot of paintball stores. Basically means you can use a big scuba tank to fill up your paintball tank. Although in this case, I've just hacked it so that I can use this thread here directly into my project to test it out. All right, so I've reassembled it now. Just going to test it out. Hey, that's pretty good. Let's see what it takes to smack it open. Not bad. <laughs> All right, let's get a barrel on this. Now, unfortunately, I was using a really low quality tap for this, so the thread here is not great, but maybe if I just use enough thread locker and hope for the best, it'll work out. The good news is this side only gets exposed to the pressure when you're actually launching the projectile, so any sealing issues here are not as big a deal. In fact, there's, there's this hole in the back that doesn't really matter that much because the amount of air that escapes through here compared to here is quite small. So now I have to figure out a way to adapt this elbow I've got into a barrel big enough to fit this grappling hook. I should be able to heat this up with a heat gun and fit this nut perfectly into some PVC pipe. Shout out to Backyard Boa for showing me the magic of PVC, so I hope this will work. Right, let's see if this works. Yeah, there you have it. Not too bad at all. I'm just gonna have to epoxy up those gaps, but it should work well enough. Wait for that to dry. Okay, I just couldn't help myself. I thought, well, while I wait for the epoxy to cure, I could just make myself a little dart out of a nail and test out how it goes, so on about, let's say, a third of the pressure. Let's see. Oh, I need something. I need a ramrod. Yeah, so while we're waiting for everything to dry, let's see how well it works shooting a nail. 
just for fun. Okay. Get my trigger. All right, here goes. Oh, I didn't even see where that went. Let's let's try that again. Still didn't see it. It bounced off the back wall and came right back to me here. Maybe third time's a charm. Oh, that was just a light tap. But we're not here for a light tap, we're here for full power. So let's try that again. Third time, the second time's a charm. Second time, third time's a charm. Fourth time's a charm. Oh! Come take a look at this. Uh, there we go. This is a piece of plywood I had on the other end of the shop. And that is the dart that I shot too deep in the plywood to even pull out. So, Okay, so nails aren't exactly the same as a grappling hook, but I still think that was a pretty fun test. Now I've run into a bit of a strange situation where all the footage I took for this video has ended up being way more content than I expected. I've actually filmed quite a lot that I haven't shown you here, but I feel like if I tried to pack it all into one video, it would just run really long or it'd miss some important stuff. Not to mention the editing, it'd probably take me a couple more days and so this video would have been delayed. Instead, I made the decision to split this video into two parts. One is what you've seen now, and the other one is going to be a shorter one, focusing on testing and the next iteration of the design. So, if you want to see that, check back on Friday next week at 9pm South Africa time, which is 7pm Greenwich Mean Time, 2pm Eastern Standard Time, or 5am Sydney time. Sorry guys, hope to see you then.